Given a staircase, it takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can take either one step or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you reach the top? That's today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through Nicole problem 70, climbing stairs. This is a very classic dynamic programming problem. Very easy, but it's a good classic or refresher. You are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can climb either one step or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Given n will be a positive integer. For example, given input 2, explanation there are two ways to climb to the top because top is only at two steps. One way is that you climb one step at a time, so it takes two steps. The other way is that you just jump two steps to the top directly. So there are two ways to it. Second example is three. Input is three. That means there are a total of three steps to reach the top. So there are three ways. One is that you take one step at a single time. So total three one steps. The, the second way is that you take one step at, at one time. And for the following two steps, you just jump two steps. So this is the second way. The third way is that you take two steps at first time, and for the last one remaining step, you take one step. This is the third way, so total of three ways. So given n, n could be 500 or 1000, how can we return the total number of distinct ways that we can climb to the top? Let's analyze the problem. So suppose we're given this example, n equals to 6. So starting from 1, how many ways can we reach to step 1? There is only one way, right, because we take one step from the floor to step one. That's it, one way. So we'll put one over here. This just means there's only one way to get to step one. Then how many ways can we get to step two? First way is that we'll go from bottom, one step, one step, two steps to reach step two. The other way is that we can just directly jump from bottom floor directly to floor two. So two ways total here. Then we'll think about how we can, how many distinct ways there are to get to step three. How many? First way is that we can we can do step by step by step, right? Step from bottom floor, step one to step one, from bottom floor to step one, and from step one to step two, from step two to step three. One step at a time, this is one way. The other way is that we jump two steps as we just went through in the problem description in the second one. This is the second example, input three, right? So we're going through input three. So this is the second way, which is jump two steps first and then take one step from two to three. This is the second way. Third way is that we take one step from bottom floor to first step. And then from first step, we directly jump two steps to the step three. There are a total of three ways to from bottom floor to step three. Then we can think about, is there any repeated computation? Let's go through that again. Let's take a, a deeper or more detailed look at this. This is the first way. Take one step at a time. So first to step one, and then we jumped, we landed on step two. This is part of the first way. We landed on step two. Okay, this is first way. Second way is that we jump two steps directly first, and then we also landed on step two. Actually, that means we base the first two ways to come to step three on top of the solutions of step two. We landed on step two first in the first two ways to get to step three. That means we can use this how many ways to climb to step two directly right and then we only need to add up the last one the last one which is we didn't land on step two first we just landed on step one which is two step away to final top destination this is two step away right and then for this one what we can also use is the number of distinct ways that we can get to step one we just we only need to add up these two. Why is this? Because this one is two step away. Again, this one is two step away to the final destination. And this one is only one step away. Based on the problem description, we can jump either one step or two steps. So the number of ways, so the number of distinct ways that we can reach to this destination is the number of distinct ways from the from the last destination only one step away plus the number of distinct ways two step away from the final destination so total if we can combine we can combine these two steps into one which is this number right the number of distinct ways that we can reach to step two 
And this one is just this one, the number of distinct ways to reach step one. Then we add up these two together. It's going to give us the number of distinct ways to reach step three. So following this logic, what we can get is for all of the rest of the steps, we can finally know the number of distinct ways to reach to the top, which is six, which is six in this case. The number of distinct ways to reach stair number four is how many? Three plus two, right? The number of distinct ways to climb to step three plus one step to step three, but to step four. Or the number of distinct ways from step two jump two steps directly to step four. So that we know the number of distinct ways to step to stair four is three plus two, which is five. So we know five is here. Then we can cal calculate the number of distinct ways for step five, which is these two combined. This one jump one step. This one jump two steps. So the number of distinct ways to step five is five plus three, which is eight. Then last, stair six, how many distinct ways? We can either take one step from step five to step six, or we jump two steps from stair four directly to step six. So the number of distinct ways to climb to step six, which is the top, is eight plus five is 13. Because the problem says we can either take one step or jump two steps at a time. So we only care about the last two steps, how many distinct ways. And how do we get to the last two steps? We calculate from the very first stair. That's how we get to the final stair. First solution is that we can use a, a cache or an array to hold every single possible distinct ways from step zero to all the way to step n minus one. That's just to quickly put that idea into the actual code right now. So a couple common cases, if n equals to one, we'll just return n. Given n will be a positive integer. So we don't need to worry about n is negative or n equals to zero. So after this, when n is greater than zero, what we'll do is that we'll initialize an array called DP dynamic programming, or just, uh, you can call it whatever. We'll just call it DP and the size of this array or this cache is going to be n plus one because we want to return the number of distinct ways to reach step n. So DP zero is zero, DP one is one, and DP two is two. And from DP three, we'll just calculate based on the last two steps, right? So we'll start from DP i equals to three, i is smaller than or equal to n so that we can get up to n, not n minus one. And then what we'll have is dpi. How do we deduce dpi? We'll get dpi from dpi minus 1 plus dpi minus 2. The last two steps, because you can either jump one step or jump two steps. So again, similarly, if the problem details that you can jump either one step or two steps or three steps, then we can calculate the last step based on the previous three steps. So it's all based on the problem description. But the idea is the same. Okay, then in the end, what we'll do is that we'll just return dpn. That's our final answer, because for three steps, dp is going to be three. And how do we get three? We get from one and two first, and then we calculate dp3 based on top of dp1 and dp2, the sum of these two. Now let's hit submit and see. All right, accepted. This is one way to use dynamic programming, very simple classic problem, but we are using an extra array, which is costing us all an extra t extra space. So is it possible to further optimize this in terms of space complexity? We can use constant space. Is it possible? Definitely it's possible. After we take a deeper look into this, we realize we only need constant extra space. We don't need to keep this entire array, right? All that we need is the last two steps. Suppose this n is 100, we only need to know the last two steps, 99 and 98. For the rest from 1 to 97, we don't really care, right? So we can just keep keep overriding these two temp variables until we finally get to top n. If we write it in that way, we don't need a whole extra array, which is going to give us a one constant extra space, space complexity. Okay, now let's put it that way. Let's remove this. So we'll initialize two variables. Okay, one step, we'll call it one step is one, and two step is two. It's not super descriptive, but that's fine. You get my idea. And then what we'll do is i equals to three i 
smaller or equal to n i plus plus. First, we'll use a temp variable to hold two step, and then we can overwrite two step to become one step. So this two step is actually the third step, right? How do we get to third step? We use the one step plus two step. These two added up is going to be the new two step, and then the one step. One step is going to be ten. We basically move everything upstairs one at a time. So previously, one step is one, two step is two. We're we're at the very bottom. One step, two step, and then we put two step into a temp variable. We move one step. We we calculate the third step to make that one to be the new two step, and then we move one step toward the previous two step, right? So that we keep. We keep calculating this until we get to n, which in this case is going to be two step. So we'll just return two step in this case. Now let's hit submit again. It's also accepted. So this way we we are not using an extra array which is costing us o o n space complexity. This one we're just using o one space complexity. That's the entire algorithm. I hope this video helps people better understand climbing stairs, this classic dynamic programming problem. If that's the case, please do me a favor and hit that like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification so that each time when I publish something new, you're not going to miss out on anything. Right now, we're going through dynamic programming problems. After this, we'll go through sorting and searching, and then different combinations of data structures and algorithms to help people better prepare for their upcoming coding interviews. So hit subscribe and tap the little bell. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.